Okay, today I'm going to be seeing if you can cook in a vacuum chamber. So first I'll just put the pasta in water directly in the vacuum chamber, reduce the pressure until the water starts boiling, and see if we leave it in there for the allotted amount of time, see if it cooks the pasta enough that we can eat it. And then if that doesn't cook the pasta, I'll add a heat source to it, so I'll put it on a unit in the vacuum chamber so that it does have a constant heat source and see if then we can cook the pasta in the vacuum chamber. You might be surprised by the results. Okay, we're gonna be cooking penne pasta today. Okay, first, cooking pasta in a vacuum chamber with no heat source. Three, two, one. So you can see the dissolved air starting to come out of it already. It's not quite boiling yet. See, it already looks like it's on the stove, about to boil. That white foam at the top. Okay, we're at full vacuum now. We've got some pretty good boiling going on in there now. You can see the sporadic bubbles that pop up every once in a while. So I've heard a lot of people say in the comment section, that they don't think it's actually boiling in the vacuum chamber. They think it's just releasing the dissolved gases in the water. And while it is true that it does release dissolved gases, it is actually boiling. So boiling is defined as when the vapor pressure of the liquid is greater than the pressure around it. And so once that happens, that's when it boils. So when you reduce the pressure around it, even room temperature water has a vapor pressure high enough to start boiling. So it is actually a defined thing what boiling is. It's not just when there's bubbles in liquid. Okay, we've got a pretty good rolling boil going now. So I'm gonna leave it going for around 11 minutes and see if our pasta is cooked after this. Okay, it's been about 11 minutes. Let's let in the air and see. First, let's see how cold that water is and then let's see if the pasta is tender at all. Okay, letting in the air, three, two, one. Okay, still cold and crunchy pasta. So no, it did not cook the pasta. Not even close. Okay, now let's try it when we add a heat source. So I'm gonna put it on the equivalent of a stove top and see if we can get the pasta cooked then. So I couldn't find an electric hot plate that was small enough to fit in my vacuum chamber, but I could find an iron. So I've rigged up the iron to get some electricity into there. As long as I don't touch these, I'm fine. I won't get shocked. So now let's see if we can cook the pasta if we add a heat source to it. So can we get the temperature of the water to raise enough to cook the pasta if we add a heat source? Okay, let's turn on our iron. Three, two, one. Let's turn on the vacuum pump. Vacuum pump, three, two, one. Okay, this should start to boil pretty rapidly because we have such a hot heat source under it now in addition to the low pressure. Oh wow, it's gonna <laughs> boil a lot once we get down. We're at 0.1 atmospheres. Okay, we've got a rolling boil in there now. So I would say it's time to start the timer. You can see we're full on boiling our pasta in there. Okay, so the question I have for you right now is the water's boiling in there with a heat source. So the question is, is that water hot right now? Go ahead and make your guess in the comments section. Okay, so we're still boiling in there. When it drops on the hot iron, it just splatters because it instantly vaporizes. Okay, it's been about 11 minutes. Let's go ahead and let the air back in. We'll view it from this side because we have some water on that side blocking our view. Okay, first I'll turn off my electricity to the iron. Okay, let's let in the air. Three, two, one. So you can see it's no longer boiling. Okay, so what do you think? Hot or cold? Should I dip my hand in it? Here we go. <laughs> Not even close to being hot. 
So the reason is because at that low of pressure, even though you have a heat source, the evaporation increases so much that you can't even heat the water. So it's boiling faster than it can heat up. So you could even get it, so with a very good vacuum, you could even get it such that you have this heat source in here, but the water is around freezing point. You just have to have a really good vacuum that can keep the pressure low enough with that high of evaporation. You can see the pasta definitely isn't cooked. Still crunchy. So no, you cannot cook pasta in a vacuum chamber. So the temperature of the water is around 82 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about the temperature of the water that I put in. So you can see it did not get hotter in the vacuum chamber. It probably cooled off a little bit. So you could, however, cook in a vacuum chamber if you did not have the water. So if you take away the water, then you get rid of the problem of low boiling temperature. So for example, if you wanted to cook a steak, you could just put it right on top of the iron and it would heat up through conduction from the iron and there wouldn't be a lot of evaporation because there's not a lot of fluids in it and so you, you could heat up the steak. So this kind of answers the question is, is there anything special about boiling? In almost every recipe, you have to get it to boiling before things happen. But there's not really anything special about boiling. That's just the highest temperature that the water can get to. So it's a good way to ensure that your water is hot enough is to boil it. So when it's boiling, you can be sure that it's around 100 degrees Celsius. It's 100 degrees Celsius at atmospheric pressure. So if you're at sea level, then it boils at 100 degrees Celsius. And another thing I wanted to mention is when I had it in the vacuum chamber without a heat source, I said there was no heat source, but actually the glass itself and the vacuum chamber bottom does act as a heat source. So as the water boils, it continues to cool down because it loses a lot of kinetic energy from the high energy molecules. If it wasn't touching any heat source like the chamber walls or the glass, then the water would just cool down pretty quickly and it would eventually just freeze and you couldn't boil it anymore. So these were kind of two versions of the same thing. In one version, I just had more heat going into it, meaning it boiled faster, but it couldn't get to a lower temperature. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you have any more questions about boiling or are really confused by this video, let me know in the comments section. I'll try to answer your questions. And if you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and be notified when my latest video comes out by hitting the bell button. And I'll see you next time.